Welcome everyone to our service for the fourth Sunday of Easter. It's the 3rd of May 2020. And our liturgy is in the Lutheran service book, Matins, page 219, page 219, the liturgy of Matins. O oh Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O oh Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, hallelujah. Blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us sing a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and the great King of all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hand. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, come, let us worship him. Words from Psalm 66. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Alleluia. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Alleluia. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies come cringing to you. Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds toward the children of men. Bless our God, O peoples, let the sound of his praise be heard, who has kept our soul among the living and has not let our feet slip. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Alleluia. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Alleluia. The first reading is from the epistle of St. John, his first epistle, chapter 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared, but we know that when he appears, 
we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. And the Gospel reading is from St. John's Gospel, chapter 16. A little while and you will see me no longer, Jesus said, and again a little while and you will see me. Some of his disciples said to one another, what is this that he says to us? A little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me, and because I am going to the Father, so they were saying, what does he mean by a little while? We do not know what he is talking about. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, is this what you are asking yourselves, what I meant by saying, a little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me? Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. So also, you have sorrow now, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice and no one will take your joy from you. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God. The office hymn is number 484, 484. Make songs of joy, 484. Make songs of joy to Christ our head. Alleluia. He lives again, who once was dead. Alleluia. Our life was purchased by his loss. Alleluia. He died our death upon the cross. Alleluia. O death, where is your deadly sin? Alleluia. Assumed by our triumphant King. Alleluia. And where your victory, O pray, Alleluia, when one like Christ has come to say, Alleluia. Behold the tyrant's one and all, Alleluia, before our mighty Savior fall, Alleluia. For this be praised the Son who rose, Alleluia, the Father and the Holy Ghost, Alleluia. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The reading that we will look at more closely today is from the Gospel lesson in which Jesus told his disciples, you have sorrow now, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. These words of Jesus are evidence of the deep sympathy that he had with his disciples. Amazingly, although he was the one who was going to be crucified, his thoughts are not just on his own sorrows, but on the sorrows of his disciples. And not just his 12 disciples then, but I would suggest also his thoughts are on your sorrows and mine. What specific sorrows of his 12 disciples does he have in mind? 
Jesus is thinking of the suffering of his disciples when he is separated from them for a little while, as he puts it. He's thinking of their sorrows as they face not just this separation anxiety, but the sorrow of what seems to be the failure of their cause, the triumph of injustice, the victory of death over life. If, when Jesus could have had so many other things on his mind, he still thought of his disciples, we should not doubt that Jesus has us and our sorrows on his mind today in the midst of the suffering and loss that are gripping the world during this pandemic. Jesus knows you have sorrow now. Have you lost a loved one? Are you grieved over the, all the other losses that are around us at this time? Instead of adopting the attitude that Satan and all that is evil have triumphed, leaving you nothing to do but feel sorrow and pain, Jesus encourages you to consider a, the temporary nature of the pain that a woman experiences during those hours of childbirth, of labor, as we call it. What encourages a woman in the midst of that particular pain is her knowledge of the fact that she has a living child of whom she, whom she will soon see and whom, of whom the, she will be the mother for the rest of her life. Jesus said, when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish for the joy that a human being has been born into the world. So also you have sorrow now, but I will see you again and your hearts will rejoice and no one will take your joy from you. People who know Jesus, know that he lives to heal and bind up the wounds of the brokenhearted. He did that during his earthly ministry and he's still doing that now. He lives to give hope to the weary and the heavy laden. He lives to proclaim liberty and to give wisdom to his people through his word, to give them a vision of his kingdom when all around they see other things that are so negative. He even makes the blind, the spiritually blind, to see today. Jesus loves us, and the supreme proof of this fact will always be his sacrifice for us that he was going to make when he spoke to his disciples, that he made on the cross once for all, and now lives to intercede for us, his redeemed people, redeemed by his blood. His death and resurrection proved his love and provided for us a joy that nothing can take from us. Whatever sorrow we face now, nothing and no one shall separate us from the love of Christ. So here's that list, shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword as it is written for your sake we are being killed all the day long we are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered no in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us for i am sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's easy to be sorrowful at this time. Our view of sorrows, our sorrows now, and our view of death is completely different, however, when we know that Jesus has successfully removed the greatest sorrow of all, the barrier between us and God that was caused by our sins. And when Jesus Christ atoned for our sins against God, he removed that barrier. And that puts everything in a different light. We are not worthy to see the one and true 
holy God, but now through Christ, as the Bible says, we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh. Because of the freedom Jesus brings, freedom from worry over how your sins might impact your salvation, you are set free to refocus on how you might serve others. You are free to refocus your eyes from this present tribulation, this momentary discomfort, to the bigger picture, including eternal life. Because when we see Jesus this way, we have a glimpse of heaven. We can see through our sorrows to see Jesus and the joy he brings that nothing can take away from us. Jesus' disciples, in those dark moments before his betrayal and suffering and death, needed a glimpse of him. And after his resurrection, when they were getting used to the idea that he was alive, well, they needed a glimpse of him too, again and again, during 40 days between his resurrection and his ascension. And after his resurrection, they saw him, not just once, but many times. And every time they saw him, they rejoiced with all their hearts. As Jesus' disciples needed a glimpse of him again and again to sustain their joy, so we look for a glimpse of Jesus today in the midst of our day-to-day -day lives. That's one of the reasons why we take Sundays as a day of focusing on Jesus. Now, as you pray the Lord's Prayer for daily bread and for forgiveness of your sins, you can know that you already have the joy of seeing Jesus in action because he is answering that prayer. Therefore, Jesus' words to his disciples do apply today. They apply to you, to your day-to-day -day troubles, your worries, your suffering, your sorrow, just as they describe the eternity that awaits all who trust in him. Let's listen to Jesus' words again and see how they describe the contrast between our earthly lives now and the eternal life we will experience in heaven. Jesus tells us, you have sorrows now, but I will see you again and your hearts will rejoice and no one will take your joy from you. As St. Peter put it, though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Amen. Amen. Turning back to the office of matins. We'll reserve the Te Deum for after this crisis is over, and we'll turn now to our prayers, beginning with the Lord's Prayer. It's on page 227. 227. Our Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, you show those in error the light of your truth, so that they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant faithfulness to all who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's church, that they may avoid whatever is contrary to their confession and follow you in all such things that are pleasing to you, 
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Father, as we are strangers and pilgrims on earth, help us to, by a true faith and a godly life, prepare for the world to come, doing the work you have given us to do while it is day, before the night comes, when no one can work. And when our last hour comes, support us by your power and receive us into your heavenly kingdom, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power. And grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Let us sing our closing hymn number 818, 818 in the Lutheran service for In thee is gladness, amid all sadness, Jesus, sunshine of my heart. By thee are given the gifts of heaven, thou the true redeemer. Our souls are way Bonds thou breakest, who trust thee surely, as built securely, he stands forever, alleluia. Our hearts are pining to see thy shining, dying or living, to thee are cleaving, nought can us ever, alleluia. Since he is ours, we fear no powers, not of earth, nor sin, nor death. He sees and blesses, in worst distresses, he can change them with the bread. Wherefore the story, tell of his glory, with hearts and voices, for him rejoices in him forever. Alleluia. We shall for gladness, still young for sadness, love him and praise him, and still shall raise him, glad him forever. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.